Greetings, Dr. Mark Winton here from the University of Central Florida, and I'd like to spend a few minutes uh, talking about uh, Chapter 7, which focuses on the male serial killer. Um, my main focus, though, for this chapter was to present two case studies, and that is the Green River Killer Gary Ridgway, uh, which I detail with several videos and PowerPoint presentations um, for this section. And then in the third section, for the third exam, we will pick up and go into the Ridgeway case even more. What I wanted to do is to take um, a case like the Ridgeway case and go into great detail. Also, we have a um, more recent research. I'm looking at male uh, perpetrators in genocides who've committed mass murder or serial murder, and in the case rapid onset serial murder, which um, I present as another case study uh, from the Bosnian genocide. But let me mention a few things about chapter seven, because I think it's real important to look at the stalking aspects of um, serial murder, but also to consider um, how online and social media uh, may be related to um, serial murder in a variety of ways. So first, your author, starts off by talking about presenting um, some of the um, profiles that he has uh, from his data set of, of serial killers and so you can read through that um, and a lot of my work uh, tend to focus more on internal thought processes uh, interactions and um, the the nature of um, uh, being male isn't really uh, uh, a, a focus of, of my um, research in, in that regard. And um, I'm, I'm more focused on the process of how one becomes a serial killer based on the socialization process that they go through. But you can read through and look at um, factors such as race, ethnicity, age at first killing, age at first apprehension, uh, average span of offender killing and um, methods of killing and so on. Um, one of the things, of course, that is important to remember here is that um, these are people who have been caught and identified and also that in this case the author has created a database and um, those are cases that are in his database. So, you know, we can't say we have a complete um, database that has every single uh, serial murder perpetrator in, in there. So, let's talk a little bit about one of the factors that relates to mobility. And um, uh, that's one of the features. There's a case in your um, uh, book, a case study, where the perpetrator lived and worked relatively close to the victims. And so that's one of the things we want to think about is um, ge geographic factors related to um, serial killers. And your author points out that male offenders who roam the streets of the United States cities and towns and remain relatively close to their killing sites appear to be the most common type of serial murder in recent years. Uh, but we also do have um, uh, highway serial killings that occur where um, uh, people who are using the highways for a variety of reasons uh, will um, kidnap or give rides to uh, victims and, and kill them. And you can see some maps in your textbook as well looking at um, the uh, highway murders probably are um, related to uh, long-haul truck drivers uh, perpetration on those uh, victims and um, uh, the pr and and when um, this occurs in um, uh, truck stops and the truck routes and everything uh, the truck drivers uh, uh, call the prostitutes that they target lot lizards and they're easy targets for the traveling serial uh, killer also, those that are stranded motorists or hitchhikers uh, can become victimized as, as well. Uh, 
interesting enough, I'm in my late 50s and, um, and I grew up in the 60s and, and 70s, but I can say I have not seen hitchhiking um, in years and years and years. Now, maybe it's just because I don't get out much, but I remember when I was living in California in um, the Bay Area in the 60s and 70s, people hitchhiked all the time. I mean, I, you would see literally uh, in any drive maybe a dozen different people uh, hitchhiking. And um, I, I think a lot has changed in regards to the uh, perception of, of that. And then there's a section on stalking and stalkers. And your author talks about his own research and um, the stalkers that typology that he has related to uh, domestic stranger and fictitious stalkers. He talks about power, anger, uh, victimization, obsessional um, uh, nuisance, uh, sexual predator, erotomania, for example. And, um, and you can take a closer look at uh, the different uh, types of um, stalkers. And in my profiling course, I have a whole section on, on stalking, but I won't go into the details here. Your author does a good job covering that in, in the textbook and talks about site and non-site stalking of potential predators like the non-site telephone calls, emails, uh, letters, gifts, voice and texting messages, um, messages left on Twitter, instant messaging, video messages, Facebook, uh, Instagram, etc. And then also site, would, which would be following the uh, victim or visiting their workplace or their home, uh, uh, vandalizing their home or car, sending or leaving gifts, threatening, and so on. And so today we see a lot more going on with uh, technology being used in the stalking process. And um, even some sophisticated stalkers might use um, uh, spyware or keystroke logging um, and might be able to turn on cameras of um, victims and so that's certainly uh, uh, something that we're beginning to pay more attention to, how technology is utilized in the stalking process and killing process. There's a case study in your textbook of um, a serial killer who did use online uh, meeting dating uh, uh, tools to um, uh, meet his uh, victims. And so there's um, uh, comparisons and, and contrasts with um, uh, females that we'll see later on when we get into that chapter and uh, the different methods used, the typologies. Your author, to quote your author, he states, by 2014, significant changes in choice of weapons occurred, noting that approximately 71% of serial offenders used guns at least as one form of killing, and 46% used them as their sole means of killing. So we've seen uh, changes in terms of, of, of weapons. Uh, the profiles, I think, are very relevant to take a look at in, in your textbook as well. Um, also looking at some of the causes of male serial offending, uh, your author points out rejection is a common theme and also um, uh, a, a lot of um, problems originating in uh, families such as sexual abuse, physical abuse, neglect, um, uh, emotional abuse, uh, mental disorders of, of parent or parents, uh, substance abuse, uh, and, and so on. And, and so there's a lot of um, information uh, there in, in, in that chapter. Again, there are, my main focus would be on, um, on, on looking at uh, some of the more recent changes we've seen in the methods that are used by uh, the male serial killers that are described, um, the case studies, uh, and uh, the use of technology and um, and how that's changed. One area that um, I did not mention here, and um, 
uh, again, if we had more time, uh, you know, it'd be useful probably for me to do a whole section of that, and that is on um, how social media affects people when they're looking up information or talking about serial murder. Uh, certainly, there would be a wealth of data out there, and you could look at communities where serial murder occurred and the reactions and interactions, how the police department frames things, how different groups frame things, how people talk about uh, the case. So it's, it's you know, one of those uh, uh, scenarios where we certainly have a lot more research that, that can be done. And this wraps up this video. Thank you.